Yo, yo, what's good, fam? Welcome to PNP. You got Rashad, you got Dave, and today we have a very special guest. We have former Ole Miss and current defensive back of the Carolina Panthers, Miles Hartsfield. What's good, brother? What's up? What's up? Hope everybody doing good, you know? First of all, I, I do got to say uh, thank you, first of all, for because you're on your bye week. You ain't had to, to come chill with us. Uh, so we first of all, we we appreciate you and thank you for even just joining the show, man. So thank you. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Nah, no problem. No problem. Yeah, man. All right. So real quick, let, let's let's rewind, bro. Let's rewind. Could take take me back to Ole Miss because, fam, I'm doing the research <laughs> and I'm like, all right, this dude is straight up battle tested. I went, fam, you lined up against Elijah Moore, A.J. Brown, D.K. Metcalf and then Van Jefferson was there at some point, too. Talk yep. to bro. That's I mean, come on, it don't get no more battle tested than that, dog. What was that like? It was it was like a game every practice. You know, you go against you know one one side of the you know, you you line up on one side, you got AJ, you know, you gotta play him a certain way. You line up on the other side, you got DK, you gotta play him a totally different type of way, and then you line up in the slot, you got Van, and then we had Demarcus Lodge, who was a good wide receiver too. So like we had, and then we had Evan Ingram, my freshman and sophomore year. So, you know, went up against some top dogs every day at practice. So you had no other way but to get better every day. And you All know, right. I feel like that's the best thing for me. You know, um, in, in high school, I wasn't really a corner or safety or anything. I was really just an athlete running around. You know, high school was high school. So then once getting to Ole Miss after prep school, it was like. I, I'm going to get some top dogs every single day and quarterbacks putting it on the money, like playing against Chad Kelly and all that. So, you know, it was a blessing to go against those guys and to see where they're at now. Like, obviously, you, you, you see the work they put in every day. It's not a it's not like a surprise to me that they're where they are in their career in the NFL. So, you know, awesome. being at Ole Miss awesome. at that time was was cool. So who, who was the toughest? Like who in practice, like who just gave you the business? Who gave you that work? So I feel like all of them had different things they were – obviously, they all have different things they're good at, right? At the line, Van was the hardest person. He gave you the smooth, ah, 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 you know, his yeah. dad being, uh, you know, wide receiver coach. You know, Van was really technique sound at the line. Mm. You know, DK, down. you let him get going, you play off coverage, you just got to want to tackle him at the end right. of the day. You know what I'm saying? He was he's – a, he's a man. He was a man at Ole Miss when he walked in the door. <laughs> so – but then, you know, at the catch point, AJ's probably one of the best I ever had to guard, you know, even wow. at practice game-wise. Like, he gets his hands on the ball. It's kind of – it's tough. It's a tough down – it's a tough down for the DB. Um, and then his his run after the catch is probably one of the best I ever seen. So, you know, they were all great at Ole Miss. Um, at, the same, at the same time, the hardest one – I I would have to give it I would have to give it to AJ. I had to give it yeah, to AJ. That's tough, man. And, yeah, and tough. A person I don't remember at Ole Miss that was that didn't really get a shot in the NFL is Demarcus Lodge. Probably one of the craziest hands route runners that Ole Miss probably had while I was there. That's tough. That's tough. So you did you did you also um <clears throat> run into Matt Corral? Matt Corral was your freshman there, if I'm not mistaken, when you were there. Freshman and sophomore year, you know, sophomore year is when he didn't. We kind of ran with uh, Plumley, was more of like the running style yep. quarterback. So uh, Matt didn't really play. And then my freshman year, he came in late in the season. Uh, so I really didn't get the Matt Corral that y'all know today. The, the <laughs> Matt Corral we know today is <laughs> top dog, Heisman Trophy candidate. I'm yeah. looking at him. I'm like, I remember when you came on campus, little Cali boy, you know, coming from coming all the way to Mississippi, you know, but Matt. You knew from day one he was a hard worker, you know what I'm saying? So he's a dude that was 
nothing was given to him at Ole Miss. He worked for everything. You know, a lot of people wrote him off when Plumlee started, and he just kept the course, kept fighting, kept, you know, kept working every day, getting better, getting better. And, you know, it just takes the right – that's why I tell people, it takes the right system. to you need. It's not always where you want to go. It's what system you want to be in, you know what I'm saying, in, yeah. in college. Because you can go to – you could go to Bama and not play, but then you could go to, you know, a Ole Miss and be – like Matt Corral is right now, be the best one of the best quarterbacks in the college football. Yeah, do do Matt Corral's a baller, bro. Like I, I just love his progression. Like he's gotten better, better uh, each year. So he he's he's on a a whole nother level right now. So real quick, yeah. um, shout out because I, I know you are a member of Omega Sci Fi. So shout out to the Q's. I know you guys just celebrated. All right, all right. You guys just celebrated uh, uh, your Founders Day. So happy Founders Day. If you didn't know. Uh, Dave and I, or Sigmas, actually, we are members of Five Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. Uh, sh- shout out to your managers and Alpha. So we, you know, we got this whole. This we got whole the D nine action popping right now. We got you know? we got the D nine in, in 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 the building, you heard? <laughs> facts, facts. So I was I was telling him I was like, yo, uh, you go get your lbs, I go get my lbs, and we, you know, we had to step off. What's what's good? <sighs> I don't think you want- and, and you're younger, bro. So I don't want to hear it. And my knees are gone. I'm almost forty, man. So you, 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 you. I ain't stepped in almost a decade, bro. No, we can do it. I got, I got nine of the LBs that I get right. So we, can, we can get to yeah. it. Hey, we got, we got sixteen of them. So we, we can, we can definitely make it happen. So that's funny, man. I, I, I just thought that was cool. Uh, that, that's dope, man. It makes. I know, I know, y'all roll deep on the Panthers too. It's a lot of, a lot of cues on the Panthers. Uh, yeah, so. yeah. Uh, well, in the, well, last year it was four of us with Russell Coon and um, right and yep. Markin. This year is just me and uh and um Trent, Trent Scott. Scott. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's dope. And that's dope. and one of our strength coaches is a is a Q too. So we throw him in the mix sometimes. You know, he he when he wants to when he wants to show that he's a Q. You know, <laughs> that's what's up. That's what's up. That's what's up. All right, so so take us so take us a draft night because I know you went undrafted, but what what was the expectation? In draft night, and then why? Why did you choose ultimately choose the Panthers to come to? So you know, first night I'm just watching. I knew nothing was going on first night. I'm just like, dang! I wish my name would get called. You know, you always dream about that first day getting called, name getting called. But reality set in after college that that wasn't a that that wasn't going to happen. Um, second, third day, second day I was you know again watching again, just you know watching people that I played with get drafted. You know, um, and s- things like that. Third day, you know, it was kind of up in the air. Like my agent was like, you know, you, d- you had a good career. You did this, you did that. But we're looking more towards the free agency. And I, I you know, being from what I come from, you know, going to Great Barrington, Massachusetts from New Jersey, living in a log cabin, not having my phone. I've, you know, been through tests that most people haven't been through. So, you know, I wasn't worried about how I was going to get there. It was all about just getting that opportunity to, to showcase my talents. And, you know, draft went by and my phone was ringing right after the draft. So I'm like, all right, at least I'll have somewhere that I can at least show them what I got and show them that I, that a team could, it's not really a chance. It's really just giving me an opportunity. So after the draft, I had a few teams call, but when uh, Coach Rule called, it was like it was high school all over again. You yeah. know, when he was at Temple, he was probably my second or third offer, I think. Um, you know, I, I was going – I thought about going to Temple. It's only, you know, 45 minutes from the crib. Right. And I just felt, you know, like he was going to give me the best shot because he knew who I was. He knew my family, you know. He was going to give me that opportunity that I've been dying for my whole life. And, you know, knowing some of the coaches, I knew that – they were bringing in the right act, right type of um, team that I wanted to be a, be a part of. You know, I knew it was going to be a hardworking team, a team that, you know, that's going to be tough, that we just got to work every single day. And there's not really no front runners. It's like people that are going to work and try to get better every single day. And that's really the reason why I chose to go to the Panthers. You know, being on draft, you get a couple of choices to go to. But I knew the Panthers was the place for me because of Coach Rule and, the stuff he believes in. That's awesome, man. So also, you know, that goes into, cause he recruited you to play. What did he recruit you to play at, at Temple? So like I said before, like high school, I was just, a, I was a running back. I was purely, yeah. I thought I was going to, you know, go to 
go to school, be a running back, get the Heisman, do all this and do that. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, high school, I was recruited as a, as, as a running back. Um, and Coach Rule wanted me at running back. So, I, But then when I went to prep school is when I transitioned into playing DB. You know, you go to prep school, not everybody, you know, you got a you got a bunch of offensive players and like ten defensive players, so somebody got to make the switch. So I ended up playing both sides of the ball there, and uh, that's what really transitioned me into playing DB. I ain't really play, I didn't play corner until my first game against Florida State at Ole Miss when I started as a freshman at safety. So it it was it's been it's been a crazy journey, but you know, I wanted to play running back, but reality set in that I was gonna play safety. Well, I mean, you did get an opportunity to play running back. Your, your, your rookie season, you you played running back. How dope is that? You wanted to be a running back, and not too many people get the opportunity to play running back in the NFL. You got to play both sides. The only player or the first player in franchise history to play both sides of the ball, log a tackle, and get some yardage on the ground. Fam, that's crazy. Like, how dope is that? It's a blessing, you know. Like like you said, not everybody gets the opportunity to even step foot on the field. So I took it and ran with it, you know. I still remember the day coach came up to me. He was like, all right, after practice, you're going to get a few – few. we're going to do a few indie drills at running back. I'm like, for real, me? I'm like, all right, bet, let's get to it, you know. So I just kind of – you know, being, being an athlete, it's just like – it was just like riding a bike. It's just like riding a bike, just getting back into, you know – cut in different ways, you know, a little, you know, the body starts hurting a different way when you play that other position. When you start playing running back in DB, it's it's a different type of movement. But, right. you know, I, uh, it was it was cool, you know, being in the same room as Christian and, you know, learning from them boys. And the hardest thing for me when I, when I was doing both was, you know, learning that offensive playbook. You know, I'm sitting there trying to learn everything. And I'm like, I'm over here dying. Uh, they talk about pass coverage. He would come in and say this long sentence for for the play. I'm like, yo, what did he just say? I don't even know what he just said. So I'll look at Teddy and be like, yo, what I, what are we doing here? Like, what we got? And so it was tough. You know, I, I was trying to think of like key words of what I could listen to, but then key words wasn't make it wasn't matching together every play. I'm like, yo, I don't know what I'm gonna do here. So, but you know, the Saints game came and. My name was on the first 15 plays. I'm like, oh, they are serious about to put me in on offense. I'm like, yeah, this is about to be crazy. So Saints came. We in the, the day before the game, they calling out uh, Miles 11. I'm like, oh, snap, let me stand up. That's me. <laughs> so it, it was cool, you know. Um, my mom, my dad, mom and dad always wanted me to play running back. So just, you know, fulfilling that dream for them and, you know, it was cool. I, you know, I got the first play. It was like a, I was just in a play action, but I got back there, seven, seven yards back there, did the play action, jogged off the field. Then, then they actually called a running play, and it was like a, it was like a, it was like a, a inside zone. I get the ball, uh, I'm running inside. I'm thinking I'm about, I see nothing but end zone, and that that hole just collapsed instantly. I'm like, oh snap. This is this ain't this ain't high school no more. <laughs> so I, I somebody right. somebody's holding my legs. I'm like, all right, I just gotta keep trucking. I just start getting hit. Bow, bow, bow. It was just and I was like, yeah, this is why this is why people they really gotta take care of their body when they play running back. Cause I, yeah. I don't know how Christian do it, you know, getting hit right. 40 times a game. Nah, I, I'd rather do the hitting than get hit 40 times a game. Yeah, I believe that. I believe that. So, oh goodness, so with C, with C Mac going down, are, are you gonna go back in the running back room? Nah, I'm I'm strictly a safety. <laughs> like I'm doing well um, at what I'm doing now, and you know I'm here to do whatever the team needs. Like I showed y'all last year, but um, I think I think I've I found my niche on the nickel position and the safety position on Panthers. Uh, but you know, I wouldn't fight it. You know, because uh, again, I'm. I'm more of a team player than, you know, than just a selfish. I'll do what I got to do. But, you know, if they, they ask me to do it, they better tell me what the play is and tell me. And, oh, right, They're going to just tell you to go play. Play. It's like, hey, yeah, go this go, way go when right, you get the ball. Right, right. <laughs> uh, I'm, not, I'm not doing the whole learn two playbooks again. Yo, that's that funny. <laughs> that's funny, man. That's tough. funny. All right, so speak, speaking of the secondary room, that DB room, man, talk about – all the new additions, man, Stephon Gilmore, C.J. Henderson, A.J. Bouye, even J.C., even though he went down. 
like fam, what is that? What is that DB room looking like? It's kind of crazy. It's this lit back there. The DB room is nothing but athletes and people who got like last year we were kind of young and we had like a vet here, a vet there. This year we're we're still kind of young, but then we got vets that have been around the game for so many years and have so much knowledge of the game that when you ask them a question, it's like you have to listen. Like if they're talking, you every all, every ear is even our coaches. Every ear is listening to what they're saying because they have so much experience and so much knowledge about the game of, you know, you know they play the game before the game's even played. You know, and that's why I really learned about you know you you think you know how to watch film until you ask those guys how they watch film. You know, they're breaking it down by the littlest thing. This person had this foot up when he's in the slot. All right, he's close to the line. You know, so having this room, I feel like has benefited me in so many ways. They don't even know. Just asking them simple questions of like, how you play this person? Like, Stefan saying, I'm going to play this. He plays everybody different. You know, he doesn't say, okay, I'm playing the game this way. He knows if he's going up against somebody he has to, that's bigger, he has to play them a different way than he plays a little slot receiver. So, you know, it's it's like a dream come true. You know, like three years ago, I was drafting these people in my franchise on Madden. Now, you know, in the same room talking about, all right, what are we about to get for lunch after practice? You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, it's nothing but a blessing to be in the, the position I am in. Super dope. All right, so you are currently on the bye week, right? So what, what plans do you have for the bye week? I notice I, I know where you are, but let the people know uh, where you are currently inside the building because that's super dope as well. Yeah, yeah. So everybody always says I'm going like we played in Miami. Some people, you know, you're going somewhere hot, you know, where the beach is, and you know they could get somewhere warm. I was like, now nah, I'm going back home to Jersey, see my parents, and also I own a a, a gym here in New Jersey in my hometown. Uh, Cerebral, New Jersey. I'm actually here right now at Limitless Fitness. You Super know what I'm saying? You know, something that me and my boys opened when Corona happened. Um, it, you know, Corona affected so many people. We wanted to show people that you could still, you know, get to the gym. No gyms were open up here because it hit Jersey pretty bad. So we were outside for a while um, working out people on our old high school field. And then you know, we thought we were just, you know, helping out friends. You know, let's just stay active, you know, during this time. We don't want to get that Corona 15 or, you know, gain weight. So we were just out there working out, training our parents. And then, you know, we always dreamt about owning a gym, working at a gym when we were like 30 years old. But, you know, the time, the you know, sometimes when you're not even looking for it, things happen. And, you know, the gym happened quick. It happened quick and... We opened it up. We were outside, and then we moved inside um, last January. Well, last November, we didn't open up classes until January, getting everything done. But, you know, it's been a learning process for all of us. You know, all of us have day-to-day -day jobs, but, you know, I'm up even on a Wednesday after practice. I'm up until 12 a.m., 1 a.m., trying to get stuff done for the gym because it's my, you know, when the off-season people go other places, I come right here, train people, work out. Um, so... It's 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 nothing but a blessing to be in this you know this position and have these people I have at the gym to uh, hold it down when I'm not there because I'm in Charlotte. But when I can, when I'm here, I'm full. I'm full limitless fitness. You'll see me with the the be limitless shirt on because you know that's our motto: be limitless. Nothing, nobody has any limits when you put your mind to it. Yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. I need one of them shirts, by the way. Come on, man. Hook us up, bro. I got, I got you. Let me know. I got you. We're about to get these, uh, these sweatshirts made right now. We, You know, so we're about to have some merchandise coming out um, in the, in January. That's that's super dope. All right, so you are enjoying the bye week. Uh, I hope everything's going well. I know you went down early with the wrist injury. Talk, yo, talk about that. Talk about the process of coming back. And then talk, tell me about playing with that club, bro. Like, you got the club on your hand. Like, I'm I'm wondering how you wrapping up. Like, you you came back. I think the first game back, you had hella tackles. Like, how is this man tackling with this, this damn club <laughs> on his hand, bro? Like, what is that process like? Yeah, so when I got hurt, you know, I didn't want to believe that I had to, like, get surgery or anything. I didn't want to believe that, like, they, you know, I, I, I got hurt and I stayed out there. Because I thought it was just like, you know, it's a wrist. I'm like, ah, it's just like a wrist sprain this and that. I'm like, it's going to get, you know, I'm going to twist my wrist a couple times. It's going to be good. Came to the sideline. They were like, all right, you got to go get x-rays. I'm like, x-rays? Like, nah, chill out. I ain't never, 
knock on wood, this is the first time I ever had to like get surgery or anything so it hit me quick you know kind of gotten you know with anybody that goes on IR it's, it could get it could get lonely so um kind of talking to people who've been on IR talking to my parents talking to my coaches I had to find a way to get better while I was on IR and stuff like that so I really started watching other players and how they play the game because mm. I was away from the game but I wanted to find another way to get better because I couldn't play, but I can watch and see how other players play in the box. Like, safety is how they play in the box and how they guard people. So, you know, I became a student of the game, seeing it from a different aspect, seeing it kind of from a coaching aspect, really dialing in on, all right, what does coach mean when they're three by one and they do these kind of for, these kind of routes and learning how to actually finding my own process or how to watch film and do different things. So I feel like you know, getting injured sucks. It sucks for anybody, but it actually upgraded my game because I was able to, you know, get better while I was injured. I didn't just let the injury. He got a call. He'll be back. Yeah, yeah, he'll be back. No big deal. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah you're, you're good. good. Yep. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, I didn't let the injury just like take over my life and, you know, be in the, the, slump, the slumps for a while. I really got better and just every day just tried to find a new way to something to better my craft. You know what I'm saying? But then coming back, I was nervous. I was, I ain't going to lie to you. I was nervous. Um, you know, they clubbed up my hand. I, I'm like, I ain't never played with one hand before. You know, I'm used to having two hands and putting my hands on people and, you know, being able to strike because I'm in the box. I don't play, I don't play like a position where, like I'm going up against linemen that are 350. I got to be able right. to use my hand. So I just started thinking, like, what's other ways I can get around this block? I can guard this person. So it actually helped me because, like, I'm using my feet more in man coverage, using my feet, then using my hands second. A lot of people use their hands and then their feet. So now I'm, mm. like, I have to use my feet first. You know what I'm saying? Things like that. Um, tracking people when I'm tackling. It's – it's crazy, you know, it's just, you really got to dial in on, all right, look at that hip, find the hip, and really, like, focus on what you're trying to tackle. Don't don't get too big, don't make things too small, but really make the tackle. So, um, playing with the club is, is difficult, but I'm not making any, I'm not letting it be an excuse for me, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to be that person, but, oh, he has a club on, that's why he, he didn't do good today. Now, I'm going to play it like if I didn't have a club on. I want you to be like, all right, he's a good player. It's not because he has one hand, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's what I'm living by right now. It's just going after it every day, you know, just attacking it as if I had two hands. I'm, uh, you know, feeling, feel, it's feeling way better. I got the cast off. I'll hopefully be out the club soon. So I'll have the two hands back for the, the tail end of the season. So it's, it's, you know, it's tough, but I'm not letting it be, I'm not letting it be excused. Yeah, man, that's super dope. Because I mean, you you talk about how playing with that is going is making you a better player. I mean, that's that's his perspective at that. I and mean, this life is about perspective, right? How you how you react to something is super dope that you using that to make you better as a player. And then once you get it off, you're gonna be that much better. That's dope. That's dope. Exactly. Love that. Love that. All right, so let's let's take a little bit off the field. We want to get to know you. I know you heavy in the gaming. You heavy in the gaming. Oh, and you, you say you one of the best. Uh, you know, Call of Duty players on on in on the on the team, right? And I'm, Dave is a game. I'm the I'm one of the best in the NFL. I'm one of the best. Okay. Oh man, <laughs> I'm one of the best in the NFL. I'll I'll stamp that right now. That, Look, that's man, crazy. You got to do an invitational, man. You gotta you gotta make this happen. We 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 gotta make something happen. We gotta we gotta make something shape. That's mm. funny. So when when you when you pick up the sticks, like what, how how'd you get in the game? So me and my boys, we've we've been in the gaming for a while. You know, we've been doing the, you know, when we were younger in high school, we were doing the game battles, doing all that stuff. You know, um, I really got serious into gaming probably, I would say like my my sophomore year of high school. That's when I was like, all right, I love gaming. We were going to like the the midnight releases, all that stuff. You know. Mm -hmm. You know, in high school, you so much time. You know, winter break, every all the kids outside sledding. We inside, yo, yo, what what clan we battling today? Like, who we got today? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, you know, it, it really, like, my 
when I was in high school, I've been playing with the same group of guys. And they've been my best friends since, you know, eighth, seventh, sixth grade. You know what I'm saying? So our relationship is crazy. Like, uh, people are like, what you doing? I'm like, I'm on the game. They already know, all right, it's time to hang the phone up. Like, you're not about to listen to me. Like, <laughs> once I get on the game, it's, it's, it's all about the game. But um, it's, it's something I, I like to do because – it, it help, helps me get out of the of what's going on in my real life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. I can relate to that. So like, I right, let's have fun again. You know what I'm saying? You know, football is so serious. Life is so serious. But in the game, I can be joking with my boys about something that happened 10 years ago. Like, yo, you remember when this happened? You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I, I, I love the I love gaming. Um, you know, I'm on that Vanguard right now. I'm killing it right now. Don't going crazy. Um, I'm waiting for this uh, new new map of uh, Warzone to to drop. And I think it's like what six more days, so I can't wait for that. Um, we're big Madden players, so if anybody wants to smoke in the Madden, I'm trash. Uh, Rashad, no, nah, I'm trash. Get your I, get your I sticks up, bro. I'm, I'm retired, man. I, I I was a heavy gamer back in the day, man, and not so. Much. I just got a PS5 the other day, and I I got to pick it up. I got to get I got to get it going I, again. I'm a heavy gamer, man, but the thing is, like. At this point, at my age level, I only like have my pockets. Like I just finished our Japanese. I'm a big Japanese RPG guy. Okay. Just finished Shin Megami Tensei Five last night. I beat the devil, you know. And I play a lot of fighters. Like at one point, I was semi pro in fighting games. So it's been a while. So I, you know, I, I got. I used to be in my Soul Calibur bag, my Street Fighter bag. Okay, you know what I'm saying? My Killer Instinct bag. I was pretty good at the Killer Instinct for Xbox. You know, I'm very. I'm a very diverse gamer. You know, I got the PS5, the Series X, the Switch. So, you know, I ain't a big Call of Duty guy, but I'll get killed on occasion if you want to get shot at. But <laughs> gotta get around the Call of Duty. Like I'm telling you, it's just it just takes a little bit of focus. That's all it takes. I know, and that's I'm the problem. Trash, I get I, I get so unfocused nowadays. Right. But I agree with you with the concept of you know it, it takes you out of everything. I've been playing when I was playing Shin Megami, man. I was pretty much not focused on anything else. Like right. I. Because every because the world's so crazy right now, everything else is going on around you. It, you got to get out of that. You got to get out of that system. My wife was like, "Hey, man, man, I, I tried to call you. I'm like, yeah, but you know, I'm thinking about those things. Right My phone's on do not. Uh, oh yeah, that it greatest greatest invention Apple's ever done. Do not disturb. <laughs> I do not <laughs> call me twice if you really need me. Yeah, yes, fact, sir. fact. All right, so you you also said you was heavy in the Disney movies, right? Yo, so uh, you, I will be anybody in the NFL in Disney trivia. I tested this out when, while I was on IR with my trainers. Uh, I am. I'm not gonna like. I'm not scared to say. A lot of people scared to watch a Disney movie. When we are, nice. when we're on that plane, I'm putting on a Disney movie. Like, so I, we so, gotta ask the question. I gotta ask the question then. What's up? What's up? What top top three Disney movies of all time. All right. So my top three it might not be everybody's, but my top no. Three. I just want. I want to hear it. I'm, I'm right. curious. M Mulan. Okay. Classic Lion King and Beauty. Okay. okay. All right. Nice. That's yeah. a, that's a solid. That's a solid. That's a solid, solid three. three. That's a, a solid three. Like I be beating everybody in my family in all these Disney. Uh, like they try to play the music and be like, "All right, what song is this?" I'm naming like <laughs> soon as soon as the soon as the 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 song starts, boom, I'm naming it. Um, one of the things I'm into right now is Hamilton on Disney. Oh, I love Hamilton, man. I I think I watch it at least two times a week. Like, um, it's dope. It is good. I, I, I love, love Hamilton, man. <laughs> uh, anything that got music, I love singing. So, like, Hamilton is like I could sing probably every song on Hamilton. Oh, uh, can you? You can sing, but can you sing? Can you sing? You know, I used to be in the gospel choir, so you know, okay. Okay. A little, okay. I can sing a little song, <laughs> song here and there, but I feel like I gotta feel the Holy Spirit in me to really get it Fair out. enough. No, I, feel I, I feel that. I, I feel, feel that. that. I, I feel, feel that. So, so I got a question. Have you seen Encanto yet? Nah, nah, bro. You got, bro. You got to go see it. It's pretty good. I, I'm gonna have to go see it. I'm gonna have to go. Bye see week. It. You got time, fam. Go, go see it, bro. <laughs> I got it's, you. It's good. The songs are the songs are dope. The songs are dope. You. All right. So this is one of my last questions. All right. So what was your welcome to the NFL moment? My welcome to the NFL moment. Ah. Uh, I will say it, it took a while to get that because last year was kind of so such a weird moment because of with COVID, not having the fans. You know, we had so many rules of what we could and could not do. 
which kept us safe throughout the season. So I really didn't get that moment until until I shook hands with Tom Brady. Oh man! After the oh. and it didn't it didn't happen until we played them home because I think we put well, we played them early on. At, we played them in in Tampa, then we played them home. So once we once we got there, and then after the game, I'm like, I'm gonna just walk out there and shake his hand. And I if, probably if you look back in the video, you, I'm probably like the first person to go up to him and be like, "Yo, good game, good game." Like we lost, but I'm like, I got this. This might not happen again, so I gotta you know say what's up. But that was probably one of the best moments, and I was like, "Dang, I'm really here in the NFL." That and then probably when I recovered the fumble in Minnesota, when when we uh, when we were down in Minnesota on the punt, that was like, dang, I just I just recovered the fumble. We, like we're about to go down and win this game. Didn't end up winning the game, but I put the team. I felt like I did my part, you know, in the in the game to to lead us to having a chance to win the game. That's dope. That's dope. We now you got your welcome to the NFL moment with Tom, but we gotta go kill him now. We gotta go. We gotta got, go get him. We, we gotta. gotta go we him. gotta go get him. We gotta go get him. That's a fact. That's a fact. All right. So Dave, you got any more questions? I want to talk about Phil Snow, man. Like, how is it like being man, Phil, the Phil Mr. Snow? Legend. The legend. Yeah, I need to know about Snow. I got. I got to know about the snowstorm, man. So you got to tell me about the snowstorm. He's he's a dude who you know is all about the X's and O's. Like he. He knows every position, obviously, as a defensive coordinator. Like, probably you could ask him anything about a D lineman. He'll be able to put him in a gap, do this, do that. Um, you know, he puts people in position to succeed, I feel like. Everybody is in the position, like, you know, you know, Haas is having a good game because Coach Snow is dialing up a good blitz. He knows when to blitz. He knows when to, you know, play man and all this. And I feel like our scheme is so good, but – I feel like everybody buys into what he he wants. You know what I'm saying? You know, everybody can, you know, you can have a scheme, but if nobody's buying into what you want to get done, it won't get done. And I feel like everybody sees the work that Coach Snow puts in. He's, you know, after the game, he's there until 12 a.m. working on the next team. So you see a dude who's done it for a while and knows what he's talking about and has the staff that we have, the, the defensive staff, and, you know, it's nothing but a blessing to be, with a guy like that. So I, I appreciate Coach Snow because he's, you know, giving me the opportunity to show that I can really play in the NFL. Yeah, we got we got to get Phil Snow a, a Jeezy Snowman chain because uh, he, he's definitely <laughs> dialing it up. Nah, uh, he, man, you, he's the truth. Yeah, you could tell, man, you guys just got better. Yeah. Like last year started out rough. Obviously, it's year one coach, but as you got, you guys got better and better, the season went on. And then this year, you guys are really turning it on. So it's, it's, it's good stuff from Phil Snow in the defense so for sure. Yeah. Sure. Any other questions, Dave? Before we get up out of here? Nah, I'm good, man. I, yeah, I want to make great, sure I get man. this no question in. So this was great, man. We, hey, Miles, we really appreciate it. Super cool, dude. And the reason why we like doing these interviews is because we really like to introduce these players. Because you guys, a lot of the, the 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 our fan, the fan base, they look at you guys as just numbers, right? right. We want to make sure that we introduce you guys to the fan base, and uh, we just really appreciate you kind of you know letting that guard down a little bit because it's different with us. We just you know YouTubers at the end of the day. And, uh, you know, you, you guys got professional media to deal with, but we differ from that. We own our own platform. Uh, we don't got to answer to nobody. So we really appreciate you uh, spending time with us, bro, because it means a lot to us and it means a lot to the fan base, bro. So we really appreciate it. Now, I appreciate you guys having me on, you know. is you know, by week I'm chilling. You know, I love to talk love to talk about stuff other than football sometimes. And, you know, you guys ask me the questions about, you know, my personal and just to show people, like, I'm just as regular as y'all. I just play a sport that you watch on TV on Sundays. So um, it's, it's, it's always cool to interact with, you know, people to just, you know, hear what other people think. So I appreciate y'all having me on. And anytime y'all y'all want to get on the game, y'all want to catch, get, get something to eat, chill. I'm the guy you got to hit up. I'm gonna. You're going to get a follow from the, from the, from the Twitter handle and my Twitter handle. We're going to, we're going to try to set something up. Bet. Let's do it. Let's do you it. You got an yeah. off season, bro. We'll, I ain't going to bother you too much. Girl. Hey, Miles, I really appreciate it once again, man.